Hey everybody, my name is Kendall Moore. Welcome back for another video of NHL 19 Franchise Moore. We're going to continue this series. Our last video, we were doing pretty well with the first half of the season. Of our first season, I believe. Uh, 40 games, 39 points for Menta. He's starting to tear it up, uh, guys. So my, point, my players are doing really well right now. Our team is doing really great as well, as you can see. We didn't have a single one of uh, a single one bad simulation. So all of our simulations were good, all four of them. So that's really good. And I guess now we're up to the Coyotes game. Now I don't know if I need to do any trades because we're up to the 50th uh, game. So I don't know if we need to make any trades or anything, uh, or 40th game or anything. Uh, after the 50 game. I feel like I'm gonna have to really look at uh, my team and see if we don't we have to do anything because look at this Peter Schwartz which I forgot he was available right there uh, but uh, apparently he's playing now he's playing on the in there it's probably because of an injury is that it yeah all right yeah he's replacing Krejci yeah Krejci is uh, injured for he's been injured for a while now yeah well, that's about it really. So I figured out a new thing, a new thing that I should probably do it uh, as of now. So basically, if you have a potential that's medium, uh, medium elite, I don't know if I have one uh, anymore. Yeah, well, Acre is one of them. But if you have a medium potential and everything, if you get the chance to play him f uh, farther than he should be, like say he's on the second line or third line, you want to play him on the uh, the line that's upwards from him. So he's on the second line. Play him on the uh, first line if he's got good potential. Like if he's a top six or an elite, something like that. You want to play him on the first line absolutely. Now we can't do that with Larkin. We could do that with uh, Svechikov. I don't want to change anything because everything's doing fine. Everything's doing well. Uh, it's going well for this team. All right. So that's a pretty good. That's what you want to do. So the medium uh, potentials, you want to move them up um, a line. The low potentials, you want to play them in their uh, play position. It's it tell it's telling you to play. All right. So that's how they grow basically. For the goaltenders, it's pretty much the same thing. The only way I saw how to grow the goaltenders really, in some capacity, is to play them in uh, their position and. In front of the position they're supposed to sort of line up as well uh, no matter the potential really but maybe i'm gonna just even for the goaltenders do the uh, the potential thing anyways let's i, I don't want to do uh, check the scouts i don't really care uh i'm gonna check the scouts after 50 games i just want to do the the season right now continue the season finish it already so two four six eight and 10 so all the way up to the capitals uh, washington capitals ga uh, uh, team uh, game basically all the way to the third of february we're coming down to the end right here the season well not really we're the half of this season but we're coming out to the end and nonetheless there's another win right there which is pretty nice it gives us a chance to see as well uh, how schwartz is going to do in the team uh, basically so He's a deaf forward, so it's kind of a the situation where it's a little bit complicated to play him and stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of players that are able to play again. Let me see who was who was injured. That's important. Uh, Crawford. Anybody else? I don't feel like Brian Finn maybe, but no, I pretty sure I wasn't playing him. Chris Thierry probably. Is that him? Is that the guy we needed to play? Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's Chris Thierry. Chris Terry, you're coming back to the team. And do we have anybody else? No, there we go. So there's our two medium elites right here. Two that I'm uh, looking forward to see how they're gonna go, basically. Better than Schwartz for sure. Schwartz is doing good, I think, in the team so far. So who's replacing my player right now? I wonder, wonder who it was. I guess it's nobody. Oh, it's not in the defense wise. It's actually goaltender, right? Yeah, it's goaltender glass. So glass, you're getting uh, change for Crawford. Crawford, you're going back there. Let me actually see my lineups. 
Okay, so you can see, as you can see, the medium and the medium potentials. That's what I'm talking about. So this one, you obviously he's playing at the right position because he's a medium top four. He's a top four D man right now in the minors. So you want to play him the top two, uh, top six. The top six, I don't care where I play them, uh, guys. But he's playing upwards, so that's pretty good. Uh, he's a low. He's supposed to be a deaf defenseman. And these are supposed to be other defensemen. I kind of have no choice but to keep them where they are, I guess. Yeah, I have no choice but to play them. Uh, stay, keep it in various positions. So let's just continue. So, so far, two games now. Two losses in regulation in a row. That's not too good. I'm hoping that we're, uh, we're going to get back up and start having a good, a successful sequence right here. So there was a win against... Rangers and there's a loss again, but in overtime we got a point at least against Ottawa. We we want to get more points. No, not losses in regulation. All right, well, we're already up to two and f uh, two and four as a record. Well, two, uh, three and uh, well with this new win, it's I guess three, four, three, three and two, one, two I believe or something like that. I'm not sure, but it's too many losses now. Too many losses. We only got three wins. Uh, three losses in regulation, uh, actually four losses in regulation, which is really not good. Uh, Risto Linen is injured. That's not good at all. That is not good at all. Risto Linen injured, guys. And yeah, now, who's going to replace him, really? I guess we'll, we'll, auto, we'll auto automatically replace him. We'll see how it goes. I trust my defense. I trust my deaf players. To do the job to do the job I hate that though I don't want my plays like that to be, just get injured for no reason Krejci is finally back in the team but what do you know let's see who is replacing uh, him it's Bertuzzo <laughs> well all right Bertuzzo is replacing him do we have anybody really that uh, would be good I guess we could test out chill whiskey I don't know. We'll keep Bertuzzo in there if Julewski's not. Julewski should probably play in there, shouldn't he? I don't know, guys. I don't think he should. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, how it works exactly. I should probably play a Bartley in there, but I don't want to penalize Hamilton for no reason, you know. I don't know, guys. So, Krejci is back. I guess... Now, Schwartz is officially a third line forward. So, officially, you gotta go there. Schwartz is a third line forward. We wanna play him. He's gonna he's gonna go in there. And, uh, who else do we, do we got? Did we trade the, uh, the player we needed to trade? I'm not entirely sure, guys. I'm not sure. Anyways, we got Rasmussen right here. So, Rasmussen... I don't know. Rasmussen is kind of, uh... A player that we want to keep. We uh, kept him instead of Valeno, but now he can't even play on his lineup. Let's see if that's going to go true. Uh, for Rasmussen, we could probably get from the New Jersey Devils. We could probably get a, a second line, uh, a second round pick from this upcoming year. And Abdul Kader, which is a D man, another D man, guys. Uh, with potential, some low top four potential. He's not signed. He's unsigned, and he's a minor deaf defenseman. He actually plays pretty well in there, uh, in the uh, OHL or whatever where he is. So let's try it out. It's not gonna work. All right. So maybe we can get. I kind of want to get him. I kind of want to get that player, that young prospect. Uh, can I get something even better? Uh, no. Nothing better that uh, could not play in the NHL as of yet. You know, I'm looking for someone that is not able to play just yet in the NHL. So maybe... I'm, done, I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure. I want to keep him. I want uh, This could be a good, a good player. So maybe instead of the second line, we're just going to try to get the, uh, the third line out of this. Maybe the third line and the fourth line instead see if it works I, it should work now so third and second uh round pick i guess with abdulkader for rasmussen which 
Hurts a lot because Rasmussen is a top, medium top six. He's got a lot of potential still, 23 years of age. He's going to be someone that's going to be playing on the second line for his entire career, is on his prime. They would be, it would have been a great player for us, but we've got Peter Schwartz, which is an elite in itself. And we, we couldn't, we can't permit ourselves to just trade Peter Schwartz without give him a chance for at least a year and so so we got we had to get rid of Valeno and Rasmussen yes now I'm not going to trade my first liner for Derex uh, Sepan of all people come on now a first round pick come on so we lost that we ended up losing that so let's look at our 10th game our last 10 games that's was actually pretty bad so 4 5 and 1 our first bad simulation so we're starting to drop the ball a little bit, which is not good. It's not well. We're gonna. I'm pretty sure we're gonna make the playoffs, guys. Pretty sure because look at how many points we've got in advantage over the fourth position. So Atlantic, we're dominating in the top three. So we don't need to worry too much, but we can't start losing like that, though. That we need to start winning again. All right. And the Washington Capitals are really having a hard time. Look at this. 2-6-2 two, and two in the last 10 games. That's uh, ridiculous. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm, I need to look at this really quick. Look at our stats. How we're doing, basically. We're at 50 games. I said I would do maybe a trade or something. I already did it. Uh, the, the trade I should have probably... Uh, I would have eventually done. If I didn't uh, had a, an injury or someone coming back, it would have been done right now. It's, it's the one with Rasmussen. So let's see where we are basically in goals uh, uh, goals per game. Basically, still the third best game uh, team for uh, goals. Goals against? Are we giving goals now? We're starting to. We're kind of in the middle. We're giving a little bit more goals, but not too much. So we're still good on that power play. Uh, power play wise there's nothing we're actually dropping the ball now so power play we're not doing the job we're having i i can't figure out the power plays the power plays is in this game guys i don't know how to figure it out uh we got a good penalty kill though so maybe power play what i can do is switch a lot that's probably what's hurting us i can probably switch that up so power play not the lineups but just the strategies so power play, we were, what was our strategy for the power play was overload. So we can probably switch that up and switch that up maybe for umbrella. See if it works out at all. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm going to switch it back. All right, let's do this, guys. We got, we're good for the second simulation. There is a uh, wrist line in which is back. So I put him back on the, uh, his lineup. He's not fully healed up yet. So we're probably going to see a message pop up. Where it says uh, that he's uh, he's good to play now, but uh, he should be good to play towards this game or this one, probably this one. But uh, we're gonna play him anyways already, since we really need this team to come back up where towards where it was. And uh, I guess without Ristolainen, it was a pretty tough time. So two, four, six, uh, eight, and ten. So all the way up to. The Columbus Blue Jackets games. Let's see how we go now. I switched up the power play uh, settings and Adam already just got injured. Are you serious? What am I supposed to do? Anyan. Do I have anybody to replace him? Do I have anybody to replace him? I do not. Adam Ernie is injured. I do not have anybody to replace him. I don't have anybody that's a deaf forward or anything. That's not good at all. What? Hang on now. Okay, that's not good at all. Well, let me see in the roster moves if I, if I got anybody that can replace him. Why don't I have a depth forward in there? I don't get it. Hang on. Let's do depth wise. I guess Nielsen, you're going to be the one. I guess you're going to be the one. And maybe kind of need... um. Left wing, do we have anybody that would be good for the left wing? Not really. Not really, guys. Okay. Well, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get Nielsen, I guess. 
the only one available right now that uh, would be decent for our team. So let's get him back into the team, the lineup. God damn, I was not expecting that at all. All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, down score in the uh, third line, and we're gonna go with uh, Nils Nelson. Nelson, you're gonna replace him, and you're gonna go on the fourth line. Now Nelson's a power forward. He's gonna play with two playmakers. Don't score was a two-way forward. I don't know, guys. I don't know how it's gonna go. Kind of want to test out maybe Nelson. Maybe I should test out Nelson with Schwartz and Brown. Just see how it goes. Because this lineup, does it go well? It's not going well, so might as well no switch that up like that, I guess. All right. Let's see how we're gonna, are they gonna play. Oh, I guess I gotta make some changes here. Damn it. I hate when I have to do changes like that because it messes up my entire team. Whoa, hang on. Okay. Ford. Okay, now I'm gonna just put Campbell in there, I guess. All right, we're good. Let's see how the, um, how the lineups go. So right away, just after the first game of the simulation, we got an injury. And Dud score gets injured. Are you serious? Now we got to get a second deaf player of our team. We don't have any other deaf players too, so this is not good. It's two left wingers too. The st the, our third line and fourth liner. <laughs> They're, they decide to play. We decide to play him on the four, third line and what happens? He gets injured. What, what is going on? The third line is dangerous. They get injured all the time. Maybe, uh, maybe I should remove Schwartz from there. I don't want to get, uh, get him injured. What the hell? All right, let's just go with Ross moves. Everybody's getting injured now. This is getting ridiculous. This year has been rough for us in injuries, guys. No, we haven't had any break whatsoever. Let's go to system. Do we have anybody that could be ready? Nobody, really. So it's a left winger. Might as well just give them uh, Kevin Mackey. But he's not ready yet. He's not ready for the NHL. We should probably just go and get Cogliano. So we're going to go and get Cogliano, a veteran in there. He can play again in the NHL. Why not? God damn it. I hate that so much. Let's just play Cogliano in there. Subst uh, substitute. So what could be a good thing right here? I'm guessing power forward. Hang on. I'm guessing with two playmakers, I don't know. Maybe a two-way forward would be good for uh, these guys. And power forward, we can try that out with these guys. All right. And AHL, of course, we got to switch that up now. And we got to get another guy. So Brian Flynn, you're going to go in there. Oh, boy. All right. I got to change the extras as well. I hate when I have to do all of that. It takes so much time to just switch things up, guys. So much time. All right, let's go. Let's just switch you up. Jesus. Let's see how we go. The wrist line is back. I know I already put him back there. The wrist line gets back, but we uh, we lose two forwards in the left wing position. But we're starting to win now because of it. I don't know what's going on. It's probably the wrist line that make uh, it's making us win, guys. When you think about it, wrist line is pretty good, making us win. Uh, it's not uh, not not making any trades. Not making any trades. God damn. Should probably look for deaf forward, but I, I'm, I have confidence in Cogliano's work. He's playing on the fourth line. He's not going to hurt us too much. I believe, at least. There we go. We, because we had two losses during regulation in a row, but we got another win right there, so that's good. Don't score his back, so it wasn't for too long that he got injured. That's good. So Cogliano, he even dropped. You see that? He even dropped. I put him back up uh, in the NHL and he drops. What the hell? Alright. Is he actually playing good in there? He's not at all. So let's just uh, put back up. A don't score with these guys, I guess. Jesus. My team is not doing good at all. We're going to put back Cogliano once we're sure that everybody's good. Um, Jordan Stahl, they want to trade this guy for uh, to us. For some reason, they want to give us this guy. I right? don't want to make any stupid trades for no reason. I'm not doing that. We got two wins in a row now. That's four uh, four wins so far. Barkov, I'm not trading him. Come on now, I'm not trading any of the elites. Sometimes these trades are ridiculous, guys. I don't know why. 
Uh, they are even an option. We, we lost a big game right there. Eight to five. That was a big time loss. Ridiculous loss. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get back. Back in it. There we go. That's a nice win. Six to three right there. So kind of a 50-50 situation right here. Except not really anymore because we're actually winning games now. Yeah. We're losing games, but then we're having winning streaks as well, so pretty good. There you go. We couldn't go as a, a further than two games in a row, two wins in a row in this one, this uh, simulation, but it's it's fine. It's fine. It's six and four. I prefer that than having a, a four and five. That's for sure. So we are, we're dominating. We're, we're going to make it to the playoffs, guys. Dominating the only team... Uh, be uh, in, in behind us is Montreal which is at 59 points so all the way at 70 points we're dominating the Atlantic division is pretty weak so we're we have the chance in that regard and uh, we're gonna make it work I guess make it work let's uh, see how our power play is go doing is our power play better now that I switched it up or anything I'm hoping that it is uh, so Detroit Red Wings, uh, even we moved up in goals. We're actually scoring more goals now. We're giving more goals though, so that's not good at all. We're actually we're giving more and more goals though. That's not good at all. We we need to switch that up. We're actually moving up in the power play. So our more, our power play is better now. That's good. It's, it was the strategy that wasn't working. Umbrella is much better for us. And we're still good in penalty kill. We're moving down, trending down, but we're still good. So we're giving a little bit too m more goals now. It's the uh, the only difference really. So let's look at everything. Let's look if we're good in everything. We I don't need a Cogliano anymore in here. So Cogliano, I just can basically probably put him back in here, put him back in the AHL, and we should be good. So anybody that grew even more. Because now is the time to see if we need to make any trades at all. Uh, cool, like, what about this guy, Connor Brown? All right, we should probably play Zablocki instead, like that. We should probably switch that out. These two lineups, the third and second line, uh, fourth line, third and fourth line are both doing bad. I can't switch up uh, Schwartz. I need to play him in his position. So he's a playmaker. He can play with a blocky, which is another playmaker, but uh, we'll see how it goes, I guess. Uh, Schwartz, let's see, if, is he truly a playmaker? Because in the NHL, it looks like he's more of a, looks like he's more of a sniper in the NHL. I don't know, in the AHL, he was playing like a playmaker and everything. I don't know, guys. Anyways, Donskoy, looks like Donskoy is... Uh, Gonna be a two. Is a two way forward. So play me two playmakers on a two way forward. They need a sniper in there. I feel like Schwartz is it. If I switch him to a sniper, they should be start to go good. But I don't want to do that because in the AHL, you don't know really. You don't know how he, what he really is. Uh, what about him, uh, Connor Brown? So Connor Brown can play on the fourth line because he's a third liner and he's an exact potential potentials. So we can play on the fourth uh, fourth line. This is a pretty decent uh, lineup, so I think I'm going to keep it the way it is. I think that's the only uh, change I'm going to do. So let's see how they go. They're doing good together, but they could be doing better, I guess. Two, two way forwards, I guess, is not that good. But they're both top twos. A top four right here. We should probably move up to uh, Troll Whiskey because he's not doing good. He's not playing good with um, his partner. Bartley is actually playing pretty good with Hutton, which I'm happy about that. So Bartley, we're going to keep him where he is, I guess. And we're going to play Choliski, I guess. Which one is the worst? I think Petriangelo is the worst one of the, the bunch. I should probably switch up for uh, Petriangelo, but I'm going to keep it the way it is for the defense. War. I don't want to switch anything and mess up my team. And he hasn't grown really. Malaki Pros hasn't grown so far. That's because he probably needs to play as a starter. But I can't do that because he's only 79. So I'm not going to do that. 
Anybody in the AHL that uh, could be ready to play doesn't look like it. Uh, Knyatsev actually grew up, so that's good. That's good for us. Anything else really? Not really. And uh, nope, doesn't look like it. All right. Uh, def uh, goalie wise, Pitt is still the same. Uh, same old, same old. There we go. Scratched. We're, we don't have anything. All right, so let me just do the lineups really quick. Let's see how our team's gonna go after uh, all this. So four games, six games, eight games. That's uh, 10 games, I believe, right here. So all the way up to the Tampa Bay Lightning's game in the middle of February uh, or March, if you could say that like that. So we're gonna pass. We're gonna be passing the trade deadline. Didn't make any trades right before the trade deadline. The only trade that we did before it that was uh, at least a month already from that was Rasmussen. So I am going to keep a close eye on Rasmussen over the Devils. See how he, he went in there. He's a, obviously a great player, a great future player that was for us. First line prospect, uh, first like round pick and everything. But we couldn't uh, keep him just because of Patrick Sh uh, Peter Schwartz basically. Adam Ernie is finally back on our team. So all these injuries that were giving us problems, now it's uh, helping us a little bit. It's actually helping out the fourth line. Not so much Connor Brown because he's he's just playing bad. He's just not playing well with anyone. But everything's good so far. I feel like the third line, there's nothing I can do for the third line, really. It's not helping out. Like the third line, I can't do anything to help him out. Anyways, done score, we're going to put him back up there. And Ernie, you're going back. There we go, you're an enforcer. Ernie's going to go back with uh, his line mates, I guess. He's going to go back in this position. I'm going to keep Zablocki in there. We'll see how it goes, really. God, don't we really want to have... I don't really have a choice as uh, to the matter. We did get three wins in a row. A, a loss in regulation, but not a win, so... See how we go. If we win games, I don't care. There you go. We win. We're winning games, so I don't care about the lineups. If it hurts a player or not, if a player gets hurt by potential, I don't care as long as we win games. You know, that's the most important part. There we go. So that's a nice simulation right there. That's a nice one. We got what do we got? Seven and three after the last ten games, which is really good. We're up to the seventh, the seventy games now. Our best player is Ecker, 58 points, having another difficult season. I don't know if he's going to be able to get to the 70 mark points. I'm hoping at least. It's just a shame really that Ecker can't, doesn't have anyone really on his lineup that uh, can be a scorer or anything, a sniper, a true sniper with him. Like he ha we have Panarin and we have... Uh, Menta playing with him and both of them are not like good enough to make him score goal uh, like to put him up in there in terms of points because he could pass he can pass the puck and everything but yeah but even Sveshnikov it wouldn't matter if we put him on the first line because he's a he's a playmaker so he wouldn't change anything he absolutely would not change anything probably be worse for wear we don't want you don't want to have two playmakers together or playing to, together. And that's basically what's happening here. I get, I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is what's happening here. Uh, Peter Schwartz is still, in my book, still a playmaker. So we'll keep him as a playmaker. But yeah, we got two playmakers playing in there. That's another two way forward. So probably, we should probably just move them back to where, uh, where they were. Maybe. I don't know. We'll keep it as it is because we're actually simulating well. Menta though is... Let's see. Menta is a power forward. It's a good first line into the second line. Like I don't need to change these guys. It's just a... I don't know why they hurt so much. Why they, they're having such a hard time in the third and fourth line. I don't know how to help them out even further. And Bartley is now... He's still a top 6 demon but he grew up. That's good. We saw him grow. So that's good. Uh, goalie wise, Prost still hasn't grown. Having a tough year, Prost, actually. Having a, a pretty tough year. But anyways, let's see uh, how the, the other simulation is going to grow, I guess. 
Let's see how we go against uh, the pits uh, all the way up to the uh, Panthers games, I guess, for Florida Panthers game, all the way up to the 6th of April, which is pretty much at the end there, very much at the end. So it's almost like the entire, there's going to be two games remaining, basically at the, the game. Now, Don Score is injured again. I believe all of our players are good again, so Don Score is playing on the fourth, fourth line. So it's going to be replaced by our other uh, player, I guess, or depth forward, which I don't remember. I think it's Nelson. Yeah, it's uh, Brock Nelson, I feel, I believe. So we're good on that. And he's already back. So he got injured twice, but got back pretty quick. Uh, Nelson's actually doing a pretty decent job, but not as much as I would like. And Dunscore is having a tough time, really. The fourth line is just not good this year. The third line either. Third line is actually... No, that third line is just doing pretty bad. They're not playing well together. Having an enforcer with them in uh, Adam Ernie. Adam Ernie is actually not a good player. Uh, having an enforcer in your team is, is like not good at all. He's just there to fight people. So it's, it's not helping us at all to have that... In a team that's got all the potential in the world, you know. So a 4-0 uh, win, 7-0 win. So two shoutouts in a row. Really good. So we're really playing well. We're playing very well in our team. And uh, I'm guessing what I'm going to do is uh, just do that. Do another uh, simulate this one. 4-0 again. So three shoutouts in a row. Can we get a fourth one? Can we finish up this season with a fourth shout out in a row? Of course, we made it to the playoffs. That was obvious from the the look of the points. So 70 points, he made it there at least. Ecker uh, feels like it's go he's going to be uh, the player with the most points on our team this year. So let's see how our team uh, went basically this year. Uh, why in the stats for the team stats? Let's see how uh, how it goes. I'm thinking we did pretty good. We we are scoring a lot of goals. That's for sure. What about the goals against per game? We actually dropped down, so that's good. We are giving less goals now. And power play wise, we're really moving up. Like power play, it sta it stabilized itself, but. I really switched out the power play and helped out a lot. And the penalty kill went up too. So everything went up. Everything's playing well. The team overall is playing well. Individual wise, it's not as I would like it. Our players on the third and fourth line are pretty bad. They're really not made to play together. But it is what it is. Overall, it makes the team better and everything. So let's just go into this game. Well, uh, we'll see how it goes. We're going to do a quick time, not quick time simulation, or just a slow time simulation. And see how it goes. First uh, period against a Montreal Canadian. That, that, that's the last game of the season. So, Mete and Kokianemi are both going to score one on us. On um, Malaki Pras. So, we decided to give Malaki Pras the last game of the season. It's on uh, road... Uh, it's on the bell setter, so it's fine by me. He's facing off against Price, so he's gotta he's gotta make his time right here. He's gotta prove that he's uh, on par with the best of the best. So far, he's not proving that in this year and uh, not in this game either. But second period, there we there, there we go. Eberly on the second line, moving it up, boys. On James Reimer, hold on now. So they just switched the goalies. What happened to Price? Did he get injured or something? Guess Price got injured because we scored on Price the first goal. Yeah, we scored the, on Price the first goal and now we're scoring on James Reimer. They decided to switch for their backup goaltender for some reason. Uh, Price must have, got, must have got injured, guys. And James Reimer as a backup for Montreal, I never thought I would see that. Anyways, let's just m jump into the third period. And see how the simulation's gonna grow, uh, go, I guess, guys. Or actually, you know what? I don't want to really look at the game so much because we're gonna look plenty of game, uh, plenty of games in the f um, playoffs. So I don't want to look at it. No, let's just simulate it. Uh, slowly simulate it. See how it goes. So 
There we go. We got a power play and we actually scored. So power play is really doing well. When I say that, guys, I mean, I mean it. So I really got another goal against Reimer. And Br Cole, Connor Brown's going to help him up a little bit. Manta's going to get another goal in the first line. That's good. So Connor Brown for the fourth line is going to help him uh, eventually. That's going to help him uh, big time to do points like that. Uh, Stepan scored one on Prost, a third goal, but doesn't matter. We score, we win this one. So we had four, three shoutouts in a row. We decided to give a chance to Malaki Prost, maybe give him a shoutout somehow, but he gave up three goals anyways. But we won the game. We ended up with a four game uh, winning streak to finish up the season, which is really good. We're going to look at the stats for. Um, the NHL and everything. So, best score this year. We actually had pretty decent scores. Two, de two scores in itself. Um, Menta, which actually ended up being a, uh, a sniper this year, playing like a sniper. But he's a power forward, so we can't switch him up to a sniper, unfortunately. Um, so, power forward, I guess, pretty good. Uh, we've got Menta, we've got Svechnikov in here. Which he's got 32 points, uh, 32 goals, and pretty much the rest is we don't have any more uh, any other player who's able to score goals. Uh, Ecker, 71 points, so pretty decent compared to his last uh, season. What what was his last season uh, like? 66 points. Last season was really disappointing. This year, not so much. This year had a better year. Uh, just because probably Menta played better as well, but he really needs a player to play well with him. We've got uh, Svechnikov and Menta, of course. Svechnikov, see, on the second line, Svechnikov is doing really well. I'm thinking he had a great year. He had a great year. Uh, it's the best year of his career so far. He's only doing better and better. So definitely in the next uh, season, he's going to be able to play on the first line. Finally, guys, he's going to be a first liner for the next year. Absolutely. Absolutely, I'm going to play on the first line. Uh, Panarin. Panarin, 62 points. So the same amount of points as Svechnikov. So there it goes. Uh, Resto Linen had a great year. 53 points. As a top two, he did his job. Uh, Larkin, 52 points. So Larkin on the second line played really well. We've got Eberly. So let me just look at the forwards. We're going to look at the way they play. All right. So we see who played well and who didn't. So Eberly played well. Uh, Larkin played well. Eberly as well did pretty good. I believe second liners. So second liners need to get four, uh, 40 points. Connor Brown did really well with 31 points. Uh, on the f he did like he did well, and they actually ended up with a minus one record. All right, so playing him on the fourth line actually helped him out in the long term. He was meant to play on the fourth line, guys, with these other players. He was meant to play with Dunskoy and the other one. That's interesting. So it actually helped him out to helped him out to play there. That's that's good. Zablocki, we play. We finished him up with the four, uh, third line. Didn't help him out too, too much, but he's a fourth liner, so um, actually he's going to help him uh, grow just a little bit. And all, as well, he's just basically going to be uh, really good next year. He's 30 points, so he's playing like a third, four, a third forward liner already. And he was on the fourth line most of the year, so that's really good from him. Donskoy... Got 23 points. Um, playing on the fourth line, so that's really good. Uh, Schwartz, I can't say anything from him. He uh, kind of played... Uh, he didn't play the, the entire year, so I can't say anything from him. Um, looks like he would have gotten probably 30 points or something like that. 20, uh, 30 points or so. For third liner, is pretty good. So he had a good a good sequence there. And uh, Krejci played pretty well for the uh, for the team. Like he got injured, he still got 40 to 14 points. So Krejci played really great. He had a great year. And Ernie, on the third line, actually, Ernie got uh, was pretty bad. Yeah, Ernie is a uh, is an enforcer, so that's that's what's hurting him really. 
the fact that he's an enforcer is a really a problem for him and uh, it's not gonna help him at all guys he's not yeah he's not good at all Ernie enforcer yeah it's not gonna help him he's not good at all we need to trade uh, we need to get rid of Adam Ernie he's not good for the team we don't need any enforcers for the team all right Adam Ernie <laughs> enforcer come on now that's terrible we got Ristolainen and did his job Hamilton did his job 40 points all right but he did better than he should be played that he was supposed to Petriangelo was disappointing one last time once again another disappointing year so Petriangelo is not playing like a top two at all Petriangelo he's not even playing like a he actually plays like a top four he's doing he would pr do pretty well on that on a top four as a top four player but it says he's a top two he's not producing like the top two that's not good at all uh chill whiskey as a top four had a really tough time so 18 games uh, 18 points minus three pretty pretty bad chill whiskey had a bad year Bartley had a, had a great year really great year from his part and Houghton could have had a better year but a plus 16 on the plus minus so I'm gonna give him that a plus 16 is really good for him so he didn't make the points but at least he got there and I'm gonna give a pass on Petri Angelo since of course he's plus nine as well you know so it's just chill whiskey he played really bad and goaltender wise Burbowski 39 wins Burbowski had a great great year again with uh, 92.5 percentage 2.10 so really great year for Burbowski once again probably better or if not no it's actually worse it's worse than it's not as good as last year but of course obviously last year was uh, he was playing on top of his head uh, he was definitely the best in my mind best player best goaltender of the league even though he wasn't because there was even better uh, goaltenders with 48 wins and stuff like that but he played on top of his head now he still got 39 wins this year and uh, played really great for an elite player he's playing absolutely crazy Malachi Prost was the one giving us troubling times here he gave basically almost four goals per game uh, with 8.74 percentage save percentage but like Prost, you need to start doing better than that all right you're a medium franchise I was hoping that you would be way better than that you would have better stats than that I mean come on now what is this that's absolutely awful the way he plays is not good at all he's not playing like a good like he's underperforming uh, uh, badly really badly as a backup and that's not good at all he really is not doing the job so really disappointed in him I should have forgot to look at the um, NHL uh, completely the entire NHL for the stats let me look at that not the when he picks just the NHL oh my god all right Crosby was on fire uh, goals the best score of the league McDavid 57 point, uh, goals 53 goals for Crosby where's oh uh, where's Ovi oh no I think Ovi got took his retirement didn't he I don't think he took his retirement I don't think Ovechkin took his retirement maybe he did maybe he did guys so Crosby 108 points he still got it guys still the best player of the league at 35 years of age still franchise player Oh my god if we get get could get our hands on that we could actually get our hands on that uh, we could trade Ecker for this guy Ecker is not producing uh, Crosby is but they're both playmakers you know what's the difference with Crosby and Ecker Crosby has a sniper playing with him that's the only difference he has someone that can score with him he actually scores goal as well he does, he does both he can do both so sprung uh daniel sprung a 93 93 i don't know i don't know 93 points this is the guy right here playing with crosby guys this is the one 
This is the one helping me out. He's a playmaker. Christ. That's crazy. A Tavares. 87 points. Really good. McDavid. All of these guys. All these guys having these points. I don't have any player doing that. Ecker should be the one having 108 points per season. And he's not even doing that. Had two good season. One great season. One decent one. And two bad years. Not a good record for Ecker. Uh... Carlson, best defenseman, 78 points, and all these other players that you can see right here. Ristolainen is actually in the top, in the top of uh, 10 or 15 uh, defensemen, so that's good. Good. Vasilevsky with the most goals, 44 uh, wins, uh, not goals but wins. There we go. Pretty good. I think like the, I think Vasilevsky might get it. Or actually, Gibson, I think, is going to be the one getting the visit now because he's got a nine. 93.4 percentage is 40 uh, 40 wins uh, yeah, Bob Robowski all the way in the fifth position really good Charlie Lindgren sometimes there's some names out of nowhere that like pop off boys Charlie Lindgren Montreal gets rid of him goes into at Pittsburgh becomes a he's a backup but he plays as their starter for some reason gets 36 wins Played pretty bad though. Had a really bad year. But god damn. 36 wins. That just means how much he has a good team in front of him. That's crazy. And the rookie starter uh, skaters. Uh, Jonathan Darlene, Darlene. I guess. 52 points. All these players. Actually he's a blocky. There we go. It's rookie year. There he had a really good rookie year. Alright I think that's it guys. We're facing off against Toronto for uh, the uh, first round of the uh, next uh, on the upcoming upcoming playoffs. So we'll see how it goes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you guys for the next one. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Be easy, guys.